And the sea came and went repeatedly. Uh, and it moved up into this trough and out over onto the shelf. In other words, we can think of the sea as uh, covering this region, shallow sea slipping out. Uh, And the interesting thing is that during the various periods of there was considerable unrest. There was uh, apparently this region of Wyoming, southeast Wyoming. Now again, our region that we're concentrating on is here. Was elevated and depressed a number of times uh, regionally. Just uh, as the sea and the sea advanced, but there came into being again a vast sequence of sediments which uh, were uh, thickest down here in the middle of this great trough, a deuce incline, and thin progressively as we come out onto this shelf. There's evidence that they, the, uh, only a very insignificant amount of this is left over this region because during times of Elevation above sea level, the erosion uh, took its toll, and uh, when it was deposited. But for those that are up until just recently, four or five years ago, we didn't. We thought that this region was elevated above the Paleozoic transgression. Down here, 20 miles south of us, we find some small limestone in layer in the granite, which carries. Uh, Fossils, Cambrian, or Division, uh, Silurian Age, so that there's some indication that these seas, the picture you'll think of now is a transgressing and regressing seas as they swept uh, out and up and down you know, across the continent in response to movements. In the, if we depress the land, the sea advances. And if we elevate it, the sea retreats. Did you ever try to picture what the continent would look like if uh, the underpinning of the North American continent would give way and be pressed just 1,000 feet? That's only 164th of total relief. Would you get on a boat at North Platte, Nebraska and get off Pittsburgh? Uh, in other words, the whole Mississippi Valley, as we know it today, would be inundated with sea, sweep up from the Gulf of Mexico and uh, south in the, Antarctic, in the Arctic, and you'd have a seaway, a thousand miles broad, just a thousand feet. Uh, well, as I say, the total relief of the Earth is 64,000 feet. That's only one sixty-four. Uh, well, you can see, don't we arrive, don't wake up in the morning, expect the Gulf of Mexico to advance over the Mississippi Valley. Uh, it isn't going to. Uh, but it has in the past, and probably will again, that, uh, again, some millions of years probably would transpire before that happened. Good morning. In my presentation on last Thursday, I likened the history of the Earth to a great play, divisible into acts and scenes. And I gave you a brief rundown or summary of Act One, known as Precambrian Time, uh, which consumed about 80% of all the known past history of the Earth. 
Act two was the Paleozoic era, which I divided into uh, early and late. And the bell caught me, I think, just as I was finishing uh, late Paleozoic time. And I will start from there, and you'll have to move along merrily. I take in the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic era. Recall that we were centering around uh, uh, the Rocky Mountain region adjacent to Laramie, the radius of 100 miles or so. And that in the late Zoic time, we had a, a mountain system evolved, rose uh, extending southward into Colorado and continuing northward into Wyoming. And that to the east, we had a Shoreline, sea, which uh, came and went. Remember that as the Earth's crust moves, it's elevated, the sea withdraws, pressed, the sea is advancing. So we had a sea that came in, probably from the east to the north. And we had the rivers draining from the highlands to the lowlands, as rivers always have, and they were carrying their inherited burden of rock fragments, as rivers always have. And we had a coastal plain. And there was deposited on that coastal plain a series of sands, conglomerates, coarse textured fragments, which were washed out as alluvial sands, the little deposits. And as we come farther uh, toward the sea, we get uh, finer textured sediments. Sediments are usually coarser as we approach their uh, source of supply and become relatively fine as we. And we get here uh, some marine limestones, thin marine limestones that are laid down uh, beneath the sea. And here are the rocks which uh, surround us. We go out to the end of the street and we'll find some of these limestones flanking the west flank of the Lamy Range and some of the sandstones, uh, which the finer textured sandstones intercalated with them. So this was the closing stage as far as we're concerned as the sea gradually did advance and uh, our limestones had to continue across as the uh, ancestral Rockies, as we call them, disappeared under a con uh, constant attack of erosion. In other words, they uh, disappeared and their products were swept in the great cycle of erosion transport and deposit uh, down onto the coastal plain and into the shallow sea. Now we're ready to take up chapter three, or act three, I should say. And that is the Mesozoic world. Or do you call firmly, we call it an era. And it will continue to interest us from about uh, 200 million years up to about 60 million years. Uh, the time span would be 140, 50 million years. And it's, and it's divisible into three acts. Act one is the Triassic period. Act two, and I'm putting these superposed as they occur in nature, is the Jurassic And then Act Three is the Cretaceous. And these are all represented in our region. 
but we'll now have to uh, expand our concept a little and go back to the regional uh, diagram. You'll recall that during the Paleozoic era, to Wyoming was a shallow shelf rising out of a deep seaway. In other words, I'm going to go back now and uh, draw a, a diagram of a portion of the Cordilleran region, as we call it, where we'll put Idaho and Utah, and Wyoming and Colorado, and Oregon, California. Called it during Paleozoic time, there were some highlands out here on the Pacific margin, very extensive highlands. And uh, they uh, gave way to a seaway, uh, which rose so that the uh, basement complex rocks, these old Precambrian rocks, and that there uh, here was the site of the deposition of a vast sequence of sediments, which. Uh, aggregated on the borderline between Utah and Idaho, uh, 40,000 feet thick, and they became comparatively thin as we come on to uh, Wyoming. We're located here, of course. They are thicker on the west and thinner on the east. But the seaway, the great seaway, the trough, uh, was out here. Now we have uh, one of these periods of crustal unrest, a uh, period of mountain making, and a rather interesting thing, this happened over and over again, one of these uh, great periods of crustal unrest take hold, we, uh, with the early great build up, great tendential pressures, thrust, the region that had been the depressed area and the recipient of miles of sedimentary fragments of rocks or limes derived from the life of the sea uh, now arise and become the highlands. So during the Mesozoic world or during this Act Three, we'll shift our uh, physical makeup. These mountains have disappeared. All this region becomes now a highland, and our seaway maximum trough shifts also to the east. Interesting. So now, in the general geography, if you please, have, we'll have highlands, and we will have seaway, and these highlands will reach from across what's now the uh, Utah uh, and uh, Idaho. And we will have our trough coming in and seaway coming in. in. Our diagram now will look something like this. There we have Bowen uh, out beyond what we call Reno, what we call this Salt Lake. All this Miami, get our bearing. And now our deposition takes place, and we get the building up of a vast sequence of sediments of Mesozoic age, thickery along the western border of Wyoming, but still maintaining uh, great thicknesses over the region. Our region, which we would say was indicated by that, and this was. It was in and out of this trough. The sea advanced and retreated uh, a number of times and expanded out and uh, left. So it is into the south, probably. The remnants of the old ancestral Rockies down in Colorado also are exposed, but I can't show that on this diagram. I'll mention a 